Why is cable sizing and fuse sizing so important? In the first episode, we looked at installing six lights onto a 12 volt jig that will eventually go into a motorhome. We calculated that the six lights would draw less than two amps. So I used a cable that's just one millimeter thick, but has the capacity to deliver 16 amps. The problem arises later when I want to install something larger in the van, something that draws, say, for example, 30 amps. Now, our cable is only rated for 16, so that component that's drawing the 30 amps, a motor of some kind, will draw the 30 amps. The cable will try to deliver the 30 amps, but it can't. It doesn't have the capacity. So it's going to overheat, melt, or even catch fire. So it's really important that we make sure we get the right cable size and the right fuse size in the van and that's what this video is going to look at today. What I need to do now is look at each individual component and calculate how many watts each component draws which is not difficult to do. I use one of these power meters and I bought two of these for a few pounds or dollars uh, they're available on Amazon I'll leave the link below but they're very simple to use they simply plug in and if I use my laptop power cable, there you go, and straight away it will start calculating the wattage. And that's all I need to know. They really are that easy to use. I just make a note of the watts of each component. We're now going to take a look at Watt's Law and that will help me calculate cable size and fuse size. And later in the next episode, we'll look at battery size once I know the wattage of all my components. That might take some time. My kids and my wife have got a lot of components. To determine cable and fuse size, we need to understand a little of Watt's Law. Watt's tells us that if we know the watts and the volts of a circuit, we can easily calculate the amps which will in turn determine fuse size. In our circuit we know that the lights draw 2.5 watts each and we've got six of them in total. We also know that the battery supplies 12 volts. According to watts, we now need to do the following. So we take our 2.5 watts per light and multiply it by six lights equals 15 watts. In the next stage we divide the watts by the volts. So it's 15 watts divided by 12 volts equals 1.25 amps and that is how much our circuit draws 1.25 amps we can also use watts law to calculate watts which is volts times amps or the volt which is watts divided by amps or the amps which is watts divided by volts coming back to our circuit we still haven't sized our cable or fuse there's one more step we need to take Fuse sizes cannot be more than 50% times the load on the system. I normally opt for 25% times load to determine the fuse size. We worked out the six lights draws 1.25 amps. On the previous slide, we determined that the fuse size cannot be more than 50% of total load. So we opted for 25%. So finally, I can do the following. We can take our 1.25 amps and multiply it by 1.25, which is the load, which will equal 1.875 amps. Unfortunately, there isn't a 1.875 fuse and the one amp fuse would be too small. So I will need to use a two amp fuse on our circuit. Now I know I need to use a two amp fuse for our lighting circuit. It's now much easier to determine the cable size. The cable size needs to be rated higher than the fuse rating. So I need a cable size that will carry more than two amps. Although a one millimeter square cable is rated at 16.5 amps, I've decided to opt for 1.5 millimeter cable rated at 21 amps, which is more than adequate and makes UK spec. When you come to do your installation, you also might want to consider your wiring runs. So if they're going behind a wall uh, that's also insulated or within a conduit, I've created a little chart here to help you calculate potential voltage drop 
should they be covered in insulation or in conduit. Again, thank you for watching. Please give me a thumbs up. Thank you.